Hello, my name is John Zelensky, and the research I do at Carleton University takes place in what we like to call the Carleton University Happiness Laboratory, or the Happy Lab for short. And uh, right now in the Happiness Laboratory, there are essentially two main lines of research. Uh, each of them has a, a different flavors to it, uh, but, but that's a good summary. Uh, the first one has to do with uh, social behavior, especially the personality trait of extroversion, uh, people who are more outgoing and, and sociable, uh, versus others, uh, introverts, who tend to uh, stay to themselves more. Um, not that they're antisocial, but they prefer uh, to be alone. Uh, more often than the extroverts do. And uh, my lab uh, has been interested in the trait of extroversion for a long time, uh, and in particular because it's such a good predictor of happiness. Uh, the introverts never like to hear this, but there's a ton of research to suggest that extroverts are happier, at least they tell us they're happier, than the introverts do on average. Of course, plenty of happy introverts out there too, um, but the extroverts are very enthusiastic when they tell us how happy they are. And we've been trying to figure out uh, why that is, and recently uh, it's taken an, an interesting direction to look not just at general personality traits, but also to look at things uh, in the moment. And uh, in the Happy Lab, we actually do a lot of laboratory experiments, uh, short-term observations of behavior, even though we're interested in these long-term traits, these trends over time. So let me give you uh, an example of that. It actually uh, started a number of years ago when this paper was published that suggested that uh, even people who are quite introverted seem to enjoy acting extroverted uh, when they do it out in their daily lives or if you bring them into a laboratory environment and you ask them to act extroverted. Uh, they report lots of positive emotions, uh, lots more than if you don't give them any instructions or a lot, lot more than if you uh, tell them to act introverted. And uh, to be honest, we didn't really believe this finding at first, uh, but now we've done a number of studies, uh, and it seems to seems to hold at least uh, across quite a few contexts. Um, it kind of raised question then, if that if that appears to be true, why don't introverts act extroverted more often? Um, you think you know everybody likes to be happy. Um, if uh, they're happy when they're acting extroverted, why don't they do it more? And we've been exploring a, a couple different answers to this question uh, in the lab, and that's something that we'll continue to do. Uh, one of the things we've looked at uh, is the idea of, of self-regulation or ego depletion. Uh, when people do things that are difficult, um, it takes up some mental energy. Um, we wear ourselves out. And uh, this mental energy seems to be uh, pretty general, so uh, if you wear yourself out doing one task, uh, there are a lot of other tasks that might be influenced. So that's kind of abstract. Uh, the idea in this particular context is that if you tell somebody, I want you to act this way, and it's a way that's uh, inconsistent with their disposition, it's a way that's, that's not their preferable way to act, they can do it. I mean, we all have to uh, be quiet when we're in a lecture class, um, everybody's a bit more talkative at a party, so we can adjust our behavior. Um, the idea, though, is it might be effortful. So when we tell introverts, I want you to act extroverted, they can do it, and it's fun, but it might wear them out. Um, that was our initial idea, and we uh, did some studies where we, we asked people to do this, and we found some support for this idea, um, but not in a way, actually, that, that tells us why introverts don't want to act extroverted. So um, we did find that some people, when we asked them to behave out of character, um, later did worse on a cognitive task that requires this, this kind of self-control, this kind of inhibition, but it turned out uh, it was only the extroverts. So when we have the extroverts act introverted, uh, they seem to suffer some cognitive consequences uh, and potentially uh, broader self-regulation uh, problems could come from that, though that's something we still need to test. Uh, the introverts, though, they were fine when we asked them to behave extroverted. Um, so it, it, it continues to raise this question, why don't they do it more? Um, we're going to explore this in the future. Uh, we're going to uh, look at some other situations. We're going to see if maybe it takes more time. And uh, uh, that, that, that work will, will continue in the lab. So uh, perhaps there are some potential students out there that would like to be part of it. Send me an email. Uh, another answer that we've explored, we found some support for this idea, 
that uh, introverts uh, don't know just how happy they could be if they were to act extroverted more. Um, the idea is that a lot of times people make decisions about what they do based on the emotions that they predict. So uh, you might say, I think going to the mall would be a lot of fun. Uh, more fun than going to the laundromat. Uh, so I'm going to go to the mall. Um, it might be uh, similar. So in, in this case, introverts uh, might, not, uh, might not fully appreciate how much fun acting extroverted could be. Um, you know, for a real world example, they might be the people that you have to drag to the party. They say, no, I'm not going to have fun. It'll be no good. Uh, once you get them there, they actually have quite a good time. Um, and uh, uh, we, see, we see some evidence for that. So that, that might be part of it, uh, but the differences aren't so big. We think there's probably more. And so we'll continue to explore that. Uh, that's a lot about extroversion. Um, I'm also really excited about another line of research, um, almost in another area of psychology. It still uh, has a lot to do with personality and emotions, um, but is uh, also about the environment, environmental psychology, or some people are starting to call it conservation psychology. And uh, again, in collaboration with students, we've been looking at first a, a personality, an individual difference, personality construct called nature relatedness. And that's uh, people's subjective sense of connection or connectedness with the natural world. So do you feel like um, I'm a part of nature? Um, maybe even nature's part of my spirituality. Or, you know, I love to be outside even if it's raining. These are the kinds of uh, uh, things that make somebody connected to nature, or, uh, what we would call high in nature relatedness. And um, what we found, uh, again, consistent with some, some theories, but, but things that haven't been tested well uh, yet, uh, there are some suggestions that people who are highly connected to nature, who score high in nature relatedness, are also happier. Um, and uh, that might be because they spend more time in nature. We know that exposure to nature has a lot of benefits, uh, including happiness, health, uh, and also even some cognitive benefits. Um, and uh, the other nice thing about pe these people who are high in nature relatedness is they also tend to be uh, uh, very pro-environmental. So they have uh, you know, environmentally sustainable attitudes. They're more likely to do things uh, that are good for the environment. And as we know, that, that's something uh, that there are lots of good reasons to think uh, we could improve society, we can improve the world if we get more people to behave in environmentally sustainable ways. Um, it's not necessarily easy, though, because we've also found that this individual difference, this nature-relatedness, is uh, quite trait-like, and by that I mean it's stable over time. It might be uh, uh, difficult, though probably not impossible, to influence. Um, we're just beginning to, to do some new studies that are going to try to pin down the causality of this relationship a little bit uh, more clearly, a little bit better. Um, and, and also, uh, we're hoping that this new, new uh, what to call it, <laughs> new step in the research uh, will also have some practical consequences, some applied benefit. And that is, uh, where we focused on the trait in the past, we're now also, also looking at people's uh, contact with nature and exploring the idea that um, putting somebody in nature can have uh, some important impacts. Uh, we've already done a bunch of studies where we've taken people on short walks and we find that they're much happier uh, when they walk outside in a natural setting compared to inside, for example, in the Carlton Tunnels. Um, and uh, even, uh, I talked about effective forecasting errors earlier, they're actually even happier than they think they would be. Um, so people might not uh, appreciate the, the hedonic or the mood benefits of nature uh, uh, in a similar way to the way introverts don't, uh, don't appreciate how much fun it is to act extroverted. Um, I'm interested now in kind of taking that further and seeing if people's uh, contact with nature might also impact the way they think about the environment or environmental problems. So uh, it might be that exposure to nature uh, makes people more cooperative. And a lot of times that cooperative behavior uh, can reflect itself in uh, more pro-environmental ways. So uh, as an example, this is a, something that, that social psychologists and economists, people who study judgment and decision making, have thought about as a model for uh, environmental behaviors, this idea of social dilemmas or commons dilemmas. Um, and you can think of uh, fisheries uh, as a good example of this. So if I uh, am a fisher and uh, I'm interested in, in catching fish so I can live, so I can make a profit, um, but uh, as a group, me and all the other people fishing don't want to take too many fish uh, because if we make the fish extinct, then we have no income. 
Um, as an individual, though, it's hard to restrain yourself if you think your neighbor is just going to take all the fish. So whatever I don't take, that person might take. Uh, and so what's required in this particular environmental issue and, and a lot of environmental problems, you know, uh, global climate change is another one that works like this, um, we need to find ways to cooperate. And so uh, it may be that exposure to nature in the short term or something like nature relatedness uh, might have an impact on these things. Uh, it might not. Uh, we're we're going to test out these ideas. So that's another thing that will uh, be going on uh, in the foreseeable future in the Happiness Lab. Uh, so again, I'd be very interested to hear from students who'd like to pursue it with us.